As someone that loves Halo Infinite, I have to admit, the problems you see on screen here are things that have been around in the game for far too long. But I was shocked to see these are getting drastically fixed in the next big additions coming to the game in Season 5, starting next week. I was on a trip when this trailer dropped. And I even see my freaking patron discord going, is Keeps alive? Because if I was home when this dropped, I would be all like... <laughs> The very quick list of things that are coming to Halo Infinite Season 5. Halo 4 Extraction is coming back. Flood-themed customization. New maps, Prism and Forbidden. Cross-core helmets. You heard that right. Changes to the battle pass that I don't think enough people are talking about, including things like removing FOMO and having battle pass XP in custom games. Getting the Mark VI armor, AKA the Master Chief armor from the campaign, if you max your career progression out. And yes, the thing that made me go Super Saiyan, AI in Forge. My goddamn dick! Which ultimately, I guess, is going to lead to Firefight King of the Hill coming later on in the season. If that sounded like a lot, it's because it is a lot. I literally was watching like Uber Nick's reaction to it, and he's like, I need to watch that again because that was too much, too freaking fast. And I would agree, there was so much in the trailer that I'm just like, I couldn't even react to much other than when the grunt dropped to reveal the freaking AI in Forge. So let me just first start off and mention the thing that not enough people are talking about, seriously. These battle pass changes. 3 for they released a blog post that kind of went through some very significant changes to the battle pass system in Halo Infinite, which I personally thought was already pretty gosh darn decent with some improvements that could be had. And it looks like they made those improvements. It's no longer gonna be a 100 tier battle pass system, it's gonna be 50 tiers. You might think, crap we're gonna get less now right because of the less tiers no basically they made it 50 tiers because every tier now instead of it just being the color coding to your battle rifle and then the next tier it's a color coding to your sniper rifle and the next tier it's a left shoulder pad and the next tier it's the right shoulder pad instead of unlocking these things bit by bit they're making every tier have potentially multiple unlocks so let's say Tier two, you unlock both shoulder pads instead of one of each. Tier three, you unlock a color coding for all of your weapons. Tier four, you unlock a color coding for all your armors. They're making each tier of the battle pass be much more of an actual reward instead of it just being a piece of the pie. It's like, no, here's the whole pie. Look forward to your next one. They're also changing up how the free unlocks and the premium unlocks work. You know, like if you paid 10 bucks or whatever to get the premium version of the battle pass this season it's like the previous ones where you know there's going to be premium items but the battle passes before season five they were kind of back and forth you know here's a free one here's a premium one here's a free one here's a premium one in season five they're going to make the first 20 tiers of the battle pass free and that's kind of cool because let's be honest a lot of the premium buyers are the people that are going to be playing the game a lot like they are investing in the game because they know they're going to be playing a lot of it or they're a fan so those first 20 tiers are for the people that you know might just come and go and don't want to invest in the game and boom the first 20 tiers are going to be for you and then the back end 30 tiers are going to be for the people that have to put in more time for their premium thing to unlock but that makes sense you know why? Because if you buy premium, your battle pass never expires anyway. So it makes a lot of sense. Am I wrong on that? I'm literally, I'm getting short on breath. <laughs> I'm so excited. But maybe the most significant new addition is that they are getting rid of the whole timed events situation where before events were two week time frames that happen maybe three or four times a season that you could unlock things, you know, like the samurai armor. Now they are changing these events to become operations. And operations are going to be, instead of spread across the season in like one or two week time frames, it's gonna be four to six weeks that you have a chance to unlock all 20 tiers of whatever the, I was about to say event, but the operation is. So that way, if you just are like me, like I just flew out of town for the week, if the event was going on, I would have missed out on an entire week of a chance to unlock that. But now I know I still have another four weeks outside of that travel week to unlock everything. That is such a great change. It just makes it much more possible for people. And that's why I'm like, I feel like 
people aren't talking about the battle pass changes enough because they are very important for that dopamine and customizing unlocks. Now, the first issue you might have thought of, and I thought of it too, is wait a minute, what if, you know, just for whatever reason, you just haven't logged on and you missed that four to week time, four to six week time frame? Is it just you never can get it again? You can't get those samurai unlocks ever again or whatever the armor is. Well, they thought of something for that, too. These limited time operations, you can get like a premium version of it, I guess, and spend 500 credits in the game, which again, yet that's basically five bucks in real world. You're going to have to do that if you want to go back to that event at any time. Now, some might say, why don't they make it free? Well, they do. They make it free for four to six weeks. And if you don't get it in that time frame, then they now have this option that you could go back and get it. You could never do that in any of the other seasons until this one. Season one, two, three, and four. You could never go back to any event, period, even if you were willing to give them money. You just missed it. Opportunity is gone forever. Now you can get this premium thing. People aren't talking about this enough. That is a big change to FOMO that Halo Infinite is addressing alongside their premium battle passes that also never expire if you buy them. If people are going to invest in your game with their money, it should never be a limited time thing. You bought it, it is permanent. It's great, it's great. And I saw somebody in my patron discord go like, oh my God, you can now earn XP in custom games. I'm gonna get into that in a moment, but it, it is, for now, at least the wording, it seems it's just battle pass XP. It's not, it's not the career XP. I hope I'm wrong, but the wording makes it feel like that's right. But we haven't even dived into the thing that I am personally the most excited about. And as I get into it, if I don't address enough of it in this video, then Patreon, we're probably going to have like a full-blown conversation or game night celebrating Season 5. So if you want to support the content at the same time and get more, then go to the description and check that out. But for now, AI in Forge. AI in Forge. <laughs> this is not just something that Halo Infinite was lacking. It's something that every single Halo game was lacking. This was not a feature in any of them. I know some are going to say, yes, it was. But no, no, no. You had to mod to do that. You have to mod to do that. You have to bootleg. I don't know the terms. You had to mess with the base game but none of the base games, none of the released versions of any Halo game has had AI in Forge. This is the first time ever. And it's in a Forge that is so beyond anything of the previous Halo games has ever had. That is the only thing. I know there's some fanboys that want to just say like, oh, Infinite's not as good as 3 and Reach and stuff like that. Sure. I agree with that in some ways, but the thing that I think we can universally agree on is Forge and Infinite is crazy, and now being able to add scripting, scripting elements that change a game like crazy, available to just everyone with the campaign AI. This is the part of the trailer that I legit went Super Saiyan 2. Okay, actually just a curveball really quick. I watched it on the side while my family was in the kitchen. I watched it on my phone. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. And I watched it. I was just like, <sighs> I come out of the living room and they're like, why are you all sweaty? <laughs> and it was so fitting in the Halo Infinite season five trailer that like right after it, you see Battle Pass XP for custom games. Cause that's the thing. If AI are gonna be in Forge, Along with all, their, all these super cool Forge maps, people should be rewarded for playing custom games. But while Battle Pass XP is great, I want to progress my career rank because now we have a Mark VI armor. Like you just get to literally play as Master Chief in multiplayer as your reward for grinding the hell out of this game. Like, and, and some might say they should allow that for all players. Listen, there is something about having a prestigious award like that because that hero rank is going to take thousands upon thousands of matches to reach. When you see somebody playing as Master Chief in a game, that has to mean something. That has to mean this is somebody that has stuck with this game through thick and thin and they love it so much that they played endless amounts of hours of it. 
I love that. That is an amazing hero reward. Mark V armor, that's gonna be in two, so maybe people will play as, you know, Halo 1 Master Chief. The thing that is more exciting to me is Cross Core is finally here. It's like, it, well, it's, it's almost here. You can now wear any helmet you want across all armor cores. You wanna wear your Samurai helmet on the Mark 7? Go for it. You wanna wear the, one of the new security helmets on the freaking World War One bunker looking one? Go for it. You could wear any helmet on any armor now. They have added cross core for helmets and Halo 4's game type extraction is coming and I don't have as much to say about this other than just because I can't remember it, it basically I don't know I feel like it's not going to be as different as King of the Hill or Dominion or Capture the Zones you know I it's just going to be another kind of zone like game type I would love for you to disagree with me if you disagree and there is two new arena maps that are done by 343 Prism looks great it looks beautiful this Needler Origins themed map and I was really freaked out the second I saw like crystals explode and cause environmental damage like that's a totally new thing and I love to see like environmental things with the map that can actually affect the game and then there's the other one forbidden forbidden continuing that ruins like map that just brings back so many halo one and two feels I love it I, I love both these maps I am a little bit sad not to see a big team battle map but hopefully they add more in in, in squad battle or something from the community stuff. And eventually in the season, we're gonna get fire fight. We're gonna get firefight later on the season, starting with King of the Hill. I'm assuming they're gonna have like multiple things. Maybe it'll be like a firefight extraction and a firefight capture the flag. <laughs> get, get, would the AIs be able to do that? But they're gonna start with the firefight King of the Hill, which is gonna be mad. I can't imagine capturing a hill when there's two hunters or like a brute chieftain in that hill. That's that's gonna be rough, but oh so much fun. And in that trailer, we saw a little glimpse of the House of Reckoning from the campaign that apparently is going to be a firefight map, which is what a lot of people were kind of hoping and expecting or whatever. And the overall opinions, including myself from the community, seems to be very positive. Just the fixing of FOMO, firefight coming, AI and forge, the maps and just new game types and the cross core and the new operations, like everything, it's such a drastic improvement that might be able to bring some people back. And I just, I, I'm ready for the grind. Like that's how it feels. I am ready for the grind to be able to get at least, you know, battle pass XP in custom games and to have something to work towards in the actual matchmaking for that hero rank with Master Chief. And the firefight is going to finally add PVE stuff to matchmaking. It's just, it's a lot that I'm just, I'm ready for the grind. It'll bring some players back, maybe not all of them. And in that vein, trivia question to you. What was the last officially reported number of players that have booted up Halo Infinite? It's been a long time since 3 for 3 and Xbox announced that player count. And if you want to compare how Halo Infinite was at launch to today, then watch this video here. And I make these videos to talk with you in the comments. So make sure you leave your thoughts down there. And don't forget to be geek, be proud, be awesome.